Hello, my soccer universe. We finally had a great game. Maybe a couple of great games yesterday. The last two, they were... At least the second one, I thoroughly enjoyed the first one. I was not entirely super neutral on it, to be honest. So, yeah. But, yeah. It was fun to watch the Netherlands. I'm wearing the 98 Dutch jersey that I have. Uh, wifey chose it for me. Uh, I told her, shall I wear Austria, shall I wear uh, the Netherlands? Um, she said initially Austria, then showed her the two options. She said, ah, the Dutch jersey looks better. And I fully agree that this is a wonderful jersey uh, to wear. Okay. We also had the first showing of England. And in a way, um, there were no upsets, so all the favorites uh, won. But before we go into these games, uh, quickly on Ericsson a little bit more, we now have confirmed that he had cardiac arrest. He was gone, but with a defibrillator, they were able with just one jolt to get him back, which uh, on one side is really uh, encouraging, on the other side, boy, he was a goner for a sec there. That is just uh, unbelievable. And yeah, uh, having, uh, you know, thought, thought, thought about it, I have to say, the way Simon Kier acted, he is the hero there. Uh, the way that the TV coverage went on and went on and on and on and not uh, pulling away was also something that, yeah, should be discussed. Uh, and especially in the light, uh, you know, I didn't see say this, but especially in the light that, you know, whenever someone runs on the field or if there's... Uh, a sign against a UEFA sponsor, they never show anything like that, but if someone is fighting for their lives, yeah. Yeah, I had, when I did the video, I had different thoughts, but I also thought that this was um, rather jarring in many, many, many ways. I wanna applaud at least the Austrian TV car car coverage because it's almost immediately when they saw that there is no no move, and I think it didn't take, take a minute, they completely backed off and left the pictures uncommented. So, good credit on them. Okay, let's get into what happened yesterday in the uh, games. It started with England-Croatia, probably the biggest name matchup um, overall. It was more or less all England. Uh, I actually cannot say much. I mean, England came out storming. Uh, yes, Croatia probably decided to absorb the pressure at first, um, but England really controlled and pushed them left and right for the first 20 minutes or so. I think, or in the, in the first within the first 15 minutes, Phil Foden hit uh, the post, but um, it kind of fizzled off. And I have to, I have to say, the, the game to me at least got a little bit boring, especially towards the end of the first half. I really thought, yeah. England is still the better team, but um, Modric could at least absorb the pressure a little bit more. What the problem for Croatia was, was the front line. And I even thought that this front line doesn't look all, all that bad, but uh, there was no punch uh, uh, there. And so England, uh, you know, I wish they would have gone for a little bit more, but there was, after 20 minutes, a noticeable break in the action. After the half, I thought Croatia, for the first 10 minutes, really... Um, did uh, had the best phase of the entire game, uh, were threatening, never really having a shot on goal. That was another thing that I was a little bit worried about uh, we, we, with them. And, uh, you know, if I was an England uh, supporter, I would be a little bit worried about Pickford because he, pun intended, is ripe to be picked in many ways. Uh, I think there were one or two actions where I thought he didn't look safe in many, in many ways, but it was not an issue. Yesterday, England just could get going. Uh, remarkably, there were no players in the starting lineup from either Liverpool or Manchester United. I think it's the first time that happened since the 92 Euros. I want to say the game against France I heard something like that. Uh, also rather remarkable. The golden came from a uh, nice pass by probably the best player on the field, uh, uh, Phillips, from Leeds United, uh, pulling it to Sterling, who scores right <laughs> you know everyone's and i say no no as well he grew up just a stone throw from wembley so 
then you were expecting Croatia is coming, but there was nothing coming. I think they were frustrated. And I have to say, I mean, Kovacic had a pretty rough challenge on to Mason Mount. Uh, also, Brozovic got a yellow card. I mean, that kind of show, shows of, of, of the three ye yellow cards, it was two of the uh, midfield. And that midfield is, is on paper a really, really good one. They didn't show much. I mean, England really controlled the game uh, for the superior side. And I have some questions defensively. However, going forward, the wealth of options there is really, 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 really uh, something to behold of. And gotta see move, move, moving forward. I think this was an important win for England. Uh, first time ever they win the opening game at, at the Euros. And I think move, moving forward, uh, I think no one really would like to play against England. Um, let's see was the first game. I think it was a good showing overall, but I'm not entirely yet convinced, but it was a really, really good showing. For Moving on to Austria. Uh, I tweeted out that I expect a 2-0 loss for, uh, to Macedonia, um, and especially when, when I saw the lineup. Uh, UEFA had, had it wrong. This was not four uh, at the back, it was five at the back, with Alaba being kind of in the Franz Beckenbauer liberal role. Completely antiquated system, and it robbed in many ways. And this is so Franco Foda. Yes, Alaba played a great center back at Bayern. Really. But in the Austrian national team, you need his uh, dy dynamic nature to kind of get the game going. Because Austria, we have a lot of talented players. But they are all drilled as pressing machines. That we're that we not using the fact is to me staggering. This is the way, this is a reason why I really cannot get, get behind Austria at the moment. I really cannot. Uh, because I want that coach out, unfortunately, with that win yesterday. He will, he can claim, yeah, we got the first win for Austria at the Euros and this is a success and probably this win is enough to see them through to the next round. Um, and so the game was exactly what you will, will, will expect. Austria had, had the handbrake on. Uh, yes, controlled the game uh, most of the time, but North Macedonia came out for, for, for a fight. Um, I was thoroughly frustrated by the overall play for Austria, especially the not precise passing, because this is not how we are drilled. They are drilled to press, 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 get the ball, bounce, 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 and into the net it goes. That's the, the style of play. Not uh, if you go, you fall back, then you get the ball and then you play neatly forward. And especially if you have Alaba at the back where all his strength that you would need in midfield is missing. I, I just don't get it. However, when you watch the goals uh, going forward, I mean, going backward, uh, you also saw what's not right with that lineup, but going, going forward, you could see the immense amount of talent because all of the goals were actually superior. I mean, the first one, the pass from Sabitzer to Lina, yes, the goalkeeper was uh, not well positioned, but the way he pulled it, uh, that, that pass was made and he, he, he pulled in, this was a great goal. Uh, I think the pass was even better than the finish. But this was an awesome goal and at that moment thought, yeah, uh, get a second one and you go out of this and, and you're really rolling. No, you had to implode. Uh, Martin Hinteregger, in his, he is a really solid defender. However, he has this tendency, especially against we we come on to, to kind of be a little bit lax. And, you know, he's with the outside of the foot, the pass forward, that I think then uh, was it hit Sabica, the ball goes back, then Bachmann makes a mistake, yes. and the ball falls to Panavinin. I mean, and then Austria, they, 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 were, they were, were complaining, yeah, this was a foul on, on the goal. No, not really, honestly. Nah, 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 nah. I was thoroughly done after this first half. Uh, a half where I thought, you know, Honestly, we should uh, uh, Austria should have led by two goals, but that it was one one really played in the cards. Yes, my result was not going right. However, I also have to now mention that someone else in my family, I said I'm afraid Austria will lose two nil this one because uh, everything points to it. My wife says, "Don't be so op so pessimistic. I think Austria will win three one." And I said at the half, uh, I said, "Yeah." She asked me how what's the score. I said one one, and she said, "Yeah, see." Um, it, they, they, they might still score two. At the beginning of the second half, and up until roughly minute 70, 
I was so disappointed in the way Austria played. Every pass did not go well. Yes, he brought on Gregor, he brought on Arnautovic uh, to give a little bit, uh, you know, a different set of skills up front. The depth of the squad is awesome. The coaching is horrid, horrendous, but especially going backward. Uh, I think there were two chances for North Macedonia to score and if they score, they win this game. However, you couldn't see in the last few minutes that Macedonia was really hanging on. I mean, uh, uh, when the goalie had to make a great save on uh, Gregoric, which probably was the save of the Tour to Tournament, so, uh, Gregoric glancing header, I think he, he, he kept on lying, lying down to really take a little bit of the pressure because Austria was then increasing the pressure on North Macedonia. And yeah, uh, Alaba moved them forward and suddenly there is pressure there. Before we talk about the two, two goals, I again say it's a felony that Austria is playing in this kit. I don't like it just from a look because it's not Austria. Then there's addition to political component, the Black and Turquoise, this is the Conservative Party. They're there, they're, they're really making at the moment a mess out of Austria in many ways. So that doesn't jive and it's not Austria's colors. I read something that, yeah, you could see that if you reverse it, uh, a black to white and then turquoise would kind of go to red. It's kind of the exact opposite in that sense. It is good. No, it's not good. It, I would either, either play with red pants, which I think would be the, uh, the look that I will prefer, or play in all black. Oh, and but honestly, we will play probably all three group games in this uh, setup. And I will not become afraid of it. They might win the Euros in this one. They will not. And I'm not a, friend, a fan of it. But yeah, going, going, going. In the 78th minute, Alaba crosses in and Gregor, a great finish. Again, shows you all the quality there. And then uh, the way Arnautovic gets his winner uh, with Lima back healing it into his pass and a path. And he going around the goalkeeper, pulling in. And then angrily shouting, I assume, at probably Alioski who was pestering him and you know he speaks very well server creation and so on so uh give him his background and i'm sure there was a little bit uh so, so he was talking about then alaba actually grab and say shut up <laughs> nanatovic is a very emotional guy i actually like his type uh but he's a very emotional guy and needs to be kept uh close because you know lip readers are everywhere so yeah 3-1 for Austria, the first win. We have now scored three goals in one game at the Euros when we had in all our previous games only a, two, a total of two goals. So at least something, but then it was North Macedonia. You were bound to win this one unless there's a major cock-up, which in some way did not happen. Uh, you know, I have this two, it's a tug of war within me. On one side, I celebrated every goal, not well. I said, yay, they scored, great. And then I'm thinking, oh no, this means that Fold is staying longer. So yeah. But it was an entertaining game, all, all over, but not a great game. Uh, what happened in Amsterdam in the evening, I think, was both. Uh, it was entertaining. Maybe from a technical perspective, it was not, not, not great because there was no midfield. And when have we ever said that a Dutch team has no midfield? I wanna. You know, I want to apologize a little bit to Frank de Boer because at least what the Dutch did in terms of positioning was quite good. They always managed to overload the spaces uh, to go in and I uh, had good control of the Ukraine. But this freewheeling, almost English style game from defense into attack without going through the midfield, uh, that has me worried for the entirety of the Tour to tournament, makes for great watching. So I think the Dutch are definitely one to, uh, if you wanna enjoy your goals, but I think this will not mean much going forward. So I still have my doubts over Frank de Boer. This was not a Dutch performance in many, many ways. Uh, however, it was played by a team in orange jerseys. And Ukraine also uh, took, used that op opportunity to hit back and forth. I mean, even the first five minutes, it could have been three goals, it could have been well, 2-1 for uh, uh, Holland, Netherlands, um, with especially Memphis day to day by how he not makes going, going forward, I mean, running 60 meters before he takes off a weak shot because he kind of ran out of steam. Probably if he goes to Dumfries uh, on the right side, he, there, he could have scored there. there. Uh, first half, I, 
I always had the feeling that Dutch had a problem finishing their chances. Dumfries, especially a uh, free header late, late in the first half, where he doesn't even pull it on goal. Uh, and also Wout Weghorst, yes, the goalie is there, who had, a, um, I think, up until late, a really good game for Ukraine, especially in the first half. Um, but, you know, they can they, they can finish you for, for the Ukraine. I always thought they have very dangerous, but it was also the last pass missing. So they were kind of a little bit a step behind. I was also a little bit disappointed by the Jersey matchup. I really would have liked Ukraine to play in yellow. I get it somehow that why they didn't, but I think it would have looked nice if they were played in yellow because it was kind of two dark jerseys against each other. Uh, thoroughly entertaining first half. Second half, actually, I, th I would argue, was not as great as the first half, but all the goals were scored in the second half. Um, but it seemed like by the 60th that the uh, game was decided. I mean, first, uh, Vinaldum uh, slams it home after that was one of one, one the situations where the cross comes in, the goalie has to clear it. Uh, then the box is overloaded, and so it falls to Van Vinaldum, who can really nicely compose himself pulls it in and then the second one by Weghorst yes there was a slight thing with offside but uh, he gets it in and I was so happy for him him to score you could see this means the word to it to him and at that moment I mean they had on uh, German TV uh, Bastian Schweinsteiger on and he said I think a Dutch heft is in the back uh, it really looks that they are controlling it and uh, Frank de Boer by completely changing uh, the lineup taking of uh, the Daily Brief on Arnhold and bring Arke and Weindahl on. And that kind of messed up the Dutch uh, defense, midfield, everything. The whole balance was lost. Still, the Ukraine had a hard time getting into uh, the game. And then it uh, was down to Jarmolenko, who gets the ball on his left foot. No one attacks him and with a beautiful shot. Really nice goal. Maybe the goal of the tournament so far, although Lina has something to say about that. Really curls it nice and in seven, seven, This was a great shot. And then I thought, uh uh, uh uh. And it happened. Malinowski cross Jaremchuk header in. 2 2 in the 79th minute. I was celebrating with the Dutch, but I felt, yeah, this is very interesting. This makes the game interesting. And now we see what the Dutch are made of. And fortunately, they could compose themselves and with the, after the nice from Arke Dumfries makes it 3 2. Uh, but I exactly those weakness is what makes me think that the Dutch will probably not uh, do much going forward. But they played this one home. A uh, great game. They're the two best, the best sides in, the, in, in, in this group, one has to say. So, yeah, with all that, uh, we have now. Uh, as I said, the results in Group C and D. Uh, Austria for once enjoys the lead on top of the table. This was the first win of Austria in a big tournament since 1990. And actually, this was the first tournament that I really, really watched. And I saw the one against the US in Florence. So interesting stuff that I, uh, I could see this. Cannot believe it, but you know, it was North Macedonia. The Netherlands also in, in there and both teams now are on a good path moving forward. Although I think Austria against Ukraine, that will be a decisive game. And also England are really looking very, very well now. As projected, uh, Austria at the moment is ahead of the Ukraine because having three points is better than having uh, no points. Uh, but, but again, I think a lot will hinge now on the next two games. If Austria can get a point against the Netherlands, they're more or less through. Uh, if the Netherlands beat Austria and Ukraine beat North Macedonia, then you have a final more, uh, more or less for that. England sailing through their group uh, for sure. Um, we don't have much changes in the third places except that now Ukraine is in there. Um, but let's uh, look at the tree. It, on, it means that Austria will have to play Italy at the moment. That's the one change. And Ukraine would have to play Spain. That's the only change. Other than that, uh, not much change except the Belgium because the rankings kind of moved now. And they were so close, close to get a Belgium is now in the final over Spain. I had yesterday France in there. So uh, slight movements here and there, but nothing really big overall. Uh, as for overall favorites, uh, since England has a win and France does not have yet, England move ahead of France, so they're now in second place, which gives me a little bit of a French flag up there. Probably 
reversed uh, in, in, in a way and many changes but most of these changes are down to simulation error because those teams are really really close together I mean if you look at Switzerland and Denmark uh, and assort them by the chances of, of winning and everything in the middle maybe the one that Austria is now ahead of Ukraine uh, we saw that uh, from before makes a little bit of sense but all the others are just a little bit uh, thrown up by chance what do we have on the menu for today? We have, honestly, it's a day, especially at the beginning, is maybe a little bit so-and-so. Scottish fans will, of course, be happy to see the, their team back in a big tour tournament playing against the Czech Republic. Could be an interesting one. I think Poland Slovakia has the potential of being either really dull or a sleeper game. That, that's the only thing I see there. And then Spain, Sweden, uh, yeah, the Corona Derby in many ways. I'm curious how this will end up. Um, I think Sweden is a dangerous side, but Spain has been beating Sweden consistently over the past three years. And playing at home, I don't see anything but a Spanish win. So yeah, that was it for me for, for today. Slightly longer vi video, but you know, when you can talk about your two favorite teams, what else can you what else can I say? Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I know it will come a little bit later, but it's fine, I hope. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, just in case you enjoyed this video, here are some videos and playlists that you actually might enjoy too. Also, please consider following me on social media and actually subscribe to my channel so that you stay up to with everything that happens in my software universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.